Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Luke back here on this how to steal thing with style channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a bootleg t-shirt design. What's a bootleg t-shirt you may ask? Well, the term bootlegging comes from the days of alcohol prohibition where people would manufacture and sell alcohol illegally and covertly. A bootleg t-shirt is a shirt made and sold illegally by someone not directly connected to the band or artist the shirt features. For example, you may be well aware of the strong bootleg t-shirt culture associated with the Grateful Dead, where people make shirts, bring them on tour, sell them in the parking lot, and that sort of small business keeps them going on tour, going to the next show. More recently, you may have seen these death metal looking like Taylor Swift shirts where people are taking pop artist names and putting them into a death metal font and making their own thing out of it. Anyways, making art in tribute to one of your favorite other artists is a really fun exercise, and today I made this design of Pauline Oliveros, who is a legendary American experimental composer and accordionist who developed and taught a philosophy she called deep listening. She's a badass of weirdo music and one of the first prominent openly lesbian musicians in the experimental music world. So. With this design, I started off by finding this awesome picture of her zoning out with an accordion. I love that she's all barefoot and looking all blissed out in it. So I got that in there. I brought a couple other reference images into the picture to see if they might be worth playing around with. This is the cover of Deep Listening, legendary ambient album that kind of paved the way for a lot of deeper sound explorations. I experimented taking this text from one of her first LPs, Accordion and Voice, because I like the font on it. And then I decided it would be nice to maybe put a frame around this main picture of Pauline. So I explored the Google newspaper archives and found some old school looking frames. I'm a big fan of the Google newspaper archives. You can find a lot of cool old stuff on there that is pretty safe to steal for your design projects. So I cut this kind of groovy looking frame out, got it all mocked up, and just didn't feel quite right. I didn't like, I didn't know how to make the frame pop off the main image more, so I put some space in between it and it just looked kind of weird, awkward to me. So I decided to find a different frame. So this is another frame I found on the Google Newspaper Archives. When I screenshotted it, it was sitting a little crooked, so I used Command Click to drag the corners of the image to straighten it out a little bit. Um, this is a very easy, quick, effective way to make something less than square a little more square. And then I converted it to a smart filter ran the filter gallery, ran the stamp filter, of course, just to get a nice, crispy, black and white contrast out of it. Once I got that all dialed, I made a mask on it. I cut out the inside of the frame with the magnetic lasso tool. Um, you can see it missed a couple spots kind of on the left there. But you can, the nice thing about masks is that you can go back and tweak stuff after the fact. So then I cut out the, the center text, made it frame-like. I got it around my main picture of Pauline. I resized it a little bit, stretched it, and got her nice and centered in there. Cleaned it up a little bit. And then it was time to experiment with some text up top. So I ran the stamp filter on that text I showed you earlier. Got that looking crispy, cut out the album title and mocked it up. And I didn't really like how the lines on that thing were sitting above the frame. It just felt like there was like too much geometric stuff going on. So I'll worry about the text later. Um, for now, I decided to try a different effect on the main image. I'm a big fan of like hardcore punk artwork and I ran it through the stamp filter because it kind of gives that that old Xerox flyer punk rock look um, and I just think it's a fun contrast to mix punk aesthetics with like minimalist composers or experimental musicians 
So I think they're pretty punk in their own right to go against musical traditions and to make just genuinely really weird music. So I played around with a light and dark balance on this stamp. I also played around with a grain filter in there to give it some more texture. My first round on the stamp filter looked really dark and I wanted a little bit more contrast, a little bit more lightness to it. So I turned off those stamps, those filters, got a brightness adjustment going on, up the brightness, lower the contrast. So I get a little bit more of the background details popping out and then I ran it back through the stamp filter again and there was a lot more detail showing that I wanted to see. So I'm pretty happy with that. Then I started the 15 minute process of finding the right font and you'll see I just scrolled through a million different options. Fonts can take forever to find the right one that's the right fit. You can see in my layers there that I made a bunch of copies. I saved the versions that I liked, tried a bunch of different kinds, tried the crass font, classic for any punk aesthetic layout. Although it's honestly really overdone and feels a little disgraceful to Crass's very pure socio-political stances to not use them in like a strict punk format. But it does look badass. But I went and tried to find some other stuff. Eventually I settled on this ITC Avant-Garde Gothic Pro. I kind of wanted a pretty minimalist sans serif because Pauline makes really minimalist music and I just think it lends itself to a clean sort of vibe. Um, and I also really like the R on it compared to some other similar shaped fonts, maybe like a Futura. I like the disconnect on that R, I thought that was pretty cool. Which I only found in like that book weight. On that particular font then once I got the font the size I liked it I ran a little filter process on it so I made it a smart filter hit it with some Gaussian blur hit it with the distort ripple distortion effect to give it a little bit of wiggliness just wanted to make it look a little less crispy clean give it a little bit of wiggly dirtiness to it so I got the filter in there and then I sharpened it um, you can adjust the size of it with the blur when you're doing a process like this. It wasn't quite as sharp as I was hoping, so I hit it with another unsharp mask and got it a little bit closer to where I was looking. Got the text pretty much centered, and that's it. I like simple, clean, minimalist designs a lot of the time. I also like really busy, crazy stuff. But sometimes less is more, and I think this conveys some of the magical simplicity of Pauline's music and her legacy. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to drop a comment, hit the like, hit the subscribe, let me know what you want to see. You want me to go more into detail on the specifics of these things? I can do that. We can do whatever. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. This is Luke. Bye.